Okay, let's check out some more questions regarding matter and energy. We're up to question four. Remember, you have all this information here that goes along with these questions. So you're going to need to take a look at it. Be very careful. Sometimes the New York State Chem Regions is as much a reading exam as it is a chemistry exam. All right, so in question four, it's asking you to explain in terms of heat flow. Well, first thing I would do is say you need to write down or remember that heat always flows from hot to cold. Let's take a look. It says the change in temperature of the bracelet when the student wore the bracelet. What makes this question confusing is that the student wore the bracelet and later removed it. But we're looking at when the student wore the bracelet. Well, before the bracelet was worn by the student, the temperature of the bracelet was 21 degrees and then after was 33. So the temperature of the bracelet went up. Well, why did it go up? Because the bracelet was absorbing energy from the student. Okay, so it says in terms of heat flow. So hot to cold means that the heat flowed from the student to the bracelet. And that's exactly what you could write down. The heat flowed from the student to the bracelet. Let's take a look at number five. All right, in question five, they're asking for a numerical setup. Numerical setups on the chemistry regions exams means you're going to go ahead and you're going to plug in the numbers for the equation, but not actually calculate the answer. So in five, we're looking for the amount of heat released by the bracelet as it cools on the desk. Well, the bracelet is copper. It's one phase. We need a heat equation. We go to reference table T. Here's my heat equations, and here's the one that shows a change in temperature. The heat equation or calorimetry equation, your, your teacher might have used that terminology as well, is for when you're dealing with a substance in only one phase because C is specific heat capacity. The other two equations are for phase changes. So let's go backwards here and let's write down the equation Q is equal to MC delta T. Okay, and let's plug the numbers in right below. You can plug the numbers in with units or without. On the answer keys from New York State, they accept it either way. Well, what am I looking at here? I'm dealing with the bracelet. I need the mass of the bracelet. It's 30.1 grams. I'm going to plug that in. My specific heat capacity. The bracelet was made of copper, so it's 0.385. And then I need delta T. Now, New York State, a lot of times I say to my students that they're not hard questions, but they're going to try to trick you. So let's take a look. You're dealing with the change in the temperature, right, as it cooled on the desk. Okay, so we're cooling the, the, the bracelet. So we know the temperature is going down, but if you take a look, and let me just get rid of this so you can see, you take a look at the sentence here, it's cooling down from 33 to 19. Be careful. Delta T means the final temperature minus initial. You can't plug it in as 33 minus 19. You're going to get it wrong because the final temperature was 19. So it's got to go 19 minus 33. And here's my numerical setup. Just be careful. New York State, sometimes the questions are tricky. The way around it, of course, you could have just calculated delta T, which was 14. So if you wanted to just put in 14 and just subtract the new two numbers and get that over with, you could do that too. That's up to you. Okay, let's keep going here. It says explain why evaporation that occurred during the uh, investigation is an endothermic process. Well, you need to know what endothermic means. Endothermic means that energy is absorbed. So when something evaporates, it's going from a liquid to a gas and the energy had to be absorbed so the particles would spread further apart, right, as a gas, com as a comprised, uh, I'm sorry, as compared to a liquid. So something that talks about 
evaporation going from a liquid to a gas, and that an endothermic process, the energy was absorbed, is going to get you the point for that question. Let's take a look at number seven here. It says state evidence from the investigation indicates the process of dissolving of NH4Cl is endothermic. Well, in 2015, they really liked the word endothermic. Again, endothermic means the energy is going in. And where's the evidence here that it's going in? Well, let's take a look. The temperature of just water by itself was 25.8 degrees Celsius. You added the ammonium chloride, and sure enough, it was stirred, we waited, etc., and look what happened. The temperature went down. So the temperature of the water in the solution dropped. That shows you that it's endothermic process. Check out more questions. Go over them. Check your answers. Listen for explanations. Just keep working hard. You have time to get things done. Repeat ones you're getting wrong. And, of course, good luck.